coming up on the uplift wildlife called chowing down see what these wolves are snacking on and why the moment is so special then a ukrainian refugee family has a home waiting here for them in minnesota we're going to tell you all about the special bond that made it possible and a delicious and authentic meal found at a gas station meet the couple making it happen Welcome to The Uplift. In this new digital series, we are here sharing some of our favorite stories. We hope we'll put a smile on your face. It's our goal to lift your spirits for at least the next 30 minutes and hopefully for a lot longer. I'm Susan Elizabeth Littlefield. Thank you so much for being with us. It's one of our favorite times of year in Minnesota. Hockey season is here. Before the NHL season began, some lucky Minnesota Wild fans got to enjoy a very special delivery. Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Good to see you. Oh, I'll give you a hug then. How are you? Thank you, thank you. Nice thank to see you. That is Wild forward Marcus Felino. He is hand delivering season tickets to Jan's home in St. Paul. Four players made surprise visits to ticket holders around the city. They also brought plenty of swag and some autograph pucks, of course. A perfect way for those fans to get ready for the new season. And check this out. We have rare footage of a Minnesota wolf family enjoying one of their favorite snacks. And maybe it's one of yours, too. The Voyager's Wolf Project captured this video of a wolf mom and her pup foraging through some blueberries up north right there. Well, you can see this is pretty cool stuff. The researchers say this is only the second piece of footage that they know of that shows this behavior. They say when blueberries are in season, they can make up more than 80% of a wolf pack's weekly diet. Who knew? Now, a story connecting families from across the world. A Ukrainian refugee family is making their way to Minneapolis, and it's all thanks to a woman here in the Twin Cities who formed a special bond with the family's son. David Schumann spoke to the pair about their unlikely friendship and all the help that they still need. While Mikola Sapronov worked to graduate from the University of Minnesota, he also watched Russian forces invade his hometown. It's very difficult because I felt like I had no control. You're feeling really powerless and you feel like you can't really do much. He needed a place to live, too, before starting his grad studies. I just jumped on it. It just felt like a gift. And before I knew it, we were connecting and I was sort of offering him everything I had. The daughter of Holocaust survivors, Margie felt an immediate affinity for Mikola. He's such a sweetheart. I mean, you know, I just I love him now. Their connection led to something greater. Margie sponsoring Mikola's family to come to America. They're now in Latvia after escaping Ukraine. I'm excited to know that they're going to be in safety, but it's also, you know, I feel in a way responsible for making sure that this transition is, um, you know, goes as smooth as possible. This is where McCullough and his family will move into a two bedroom apartment, university housing. They'll be here in about three weeks and the to do list to get the place ready is about a mile long. You need every fork, spoon, sheet, you need everything. A post asking for donations got an overwhelming response. When you make a personal connection, everything changes you start to really care. It's not just some cause out there. You start to care. And that brings out something very beautiful in us. In Minneapolis, I really hope that they will be able to find themselves here. And as I, you know, found myself here. David Schumann, WCCO 4 News. There is power in understanding. That is an important message from those dealing with sickle cell anemia. It's a painful lifelong disease that is diagnosed in one in 365 African-American babies. I recently met two men on a quest to make sure that people better understand this disease, how it feels, and see the fighters who are fighting hard. The carefree days of being a kid for little Isaac, those moments were interrupted by regular hospital stays. Even till this day, whenever I do have a pain crisis, it takes me back then because it, it all feels kind of the same, mm -hmm. you know. You're back to that little kid yeah. who was in pain. Right, yeah. His life had been affected, but not defined from the genetic condition of sickle cell anemia. This is major pain. 
right? Like, what does it feel like inside? It feels like somebody's kind of squeezing your bones constantly. It can be unbearable, depending on the level, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially falling into a crisis. His doctor at M Health Fairview works with patients in crisis. But most of the time, it'll feel like it's um, recurrent, get it, almost like getting hit with a hammer in your hips or in your back over and over and over again, and nothing seems to work. The disease affects people in the U.S. from African descent. It comes from a regional natural defense against malaria. The red blood cells, which typically look almost like a donut shape without the hole punched out, will turn into almost a hook or a sickle shape when there's not enough oxygen in the blood. He's working to elevate care because data shows black people in the U.S. have less access to proper health care. We need to provide patients with a sense of trust that we are listening to them. And even though the pain is powerful, the resilience is too. People who deal with the disease are a lot stronger than they look. Mm. That's, that's the biggest thing. Um, I can tell you're strong. I try to be. Just ahead, songs that are changing the narrative in a notorious Minneapolis spot. Hear why these local artists say that the music is just what George Floyd Square needs.